elimination produces alkenes from quaternary ammonium salts via anti zaitsev elimination. This is a nitrogen with four R groups attached, two methyl groups, a propyl group, and an isobutyl group. That makes it a quaternary amine, and the nitrogen has a positive formal charge connected to this bromide ion we have a salt, a positive and a negative, makes it a quaternary ammonium salt. Quaternary ammonium salts are used in Hoffman elimination, and they're also used in phase transfer catalysis along with crown ethers. But we're going to be looking at the Hoffman elimination here. Now we use silver oxide and water and heat. You can do this in two steps saving the heat for the second step or putting all of the stuff together with the heat at the same time. It doesn't matter. And here's what happens. The silver oxide and water produce hydroxide. I know you're saying, couldn't we just put hydroxide in? It turns out it works better this way, but we're not going to talk about why. And what you're going to do is, and this is very important, you're going to remove the beta hydrogen from the least substituted beta carbon. You're going to remove the beta hydrogen from the least substituted beta carbon. The alpha carbons are next to the nitrogen. The beta carbons are next to the alphas. And the hydrogen on a beta carbon is called a beta hydrogen. This is secondary, and this is tertiary. The rule is you remove the beta hydrogen from the least substituted beta carbon. That gives you the least substituted alkene as your product, and that's called anti zaitsev elimination, or in this case, it's the Hoffman elimination. So the hydroxide grabs this hydrogen, and the electrons here, now this arrow should go from these electrons, I made it a little too big, uh, goes from these electrons down to here, and then these electrons here jump onto the nitrogen. Why do they do this? Because the nitrogen here with a positive charge is going to be a good leaving group, and it drives this reaction, it makes this hydrogen acidic. So, one more time, hydroxide to hydrogen, these electrons, not the hydrogen, drops down to here, and these electrons neutralize that charge, breaking this bond. And let's see what we get. Oh, wow, look at this. The electrons here form a lone pair on the nitrogen, not drawn. The bromine is doing absolutely nothing but hanging out. But look, these electrons that you see over here are now forming a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons. And this is your main product that you care about. You're trying to make an alkene, but you also get this amine over here on the left as well. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, gosh, Rich, that was so much fun. Let's do it again. Okay, let's do it again. This time around, we're going to make it a cyclic quaternary ammonium salt, so the leading group will stay attached because of the ring. Oh, my. So, nothing new about this. Quaternary ammonium salt, silver oxide, water, and heat. Standard Hoffman elimination reagents. What happens next? Well, these are the alphas, and these are the betas. And you can clearly see that this is primary over here, and these guys are secondary. And so this is the least substituted. Again, uh, my arrows aren't that great over here. Um, the hydroxide comes along, grabs this hydrogen, then these electrons, not that hydrogen, drop down, and then these electrons are going to put a lone pair on the nitrogen, and we're going to get a double bond right here. Let's see what we get. Wow! That is so cool. You see what happened is this formed the double bond here, and this part left, but it was attached by the ring structure, so what you get is you get your amine that you had here, connected through that ring structure to the alkene which you just formed. Where does it form? Between the alpha and beta carbon. And of course you produce water, but who cares about that? So that 
is the extremely cool Hoffman Elimination. Hope you liked it.